You are now listening to the sounds of Mood Swing Music Group. What's up? Welcome back to the channel. And this is part three in our tutorial for the beat making series. So what we're going to do today, we're going to get into machine. And once we get in machine, man, we're going to do it just like we've been doing it, man. So in the first video, I showed you how to create the drum kit and save it. In the second video, I showed you how to... Uh, <clears throat> Created, I mean, go back into that drum kit and make changes, create your pattern, and then save the drum kit and the pattern together. In this video, man, we're going to go back in. We're going to go to group A right here. We're going to go to open. And we're going to open up our kit that we saved, our 2.0 kit. That's already set up. Double click down here so you can get it on the screen. Have enough real estate. Double click right here. Nope. Leave that open. It's already open. And then today what we're going to do, man, we got our drum kit. The Mitch test kit. The Mitch test kit was the drum kit. The, the pattern that we created was the Mitch test kit 2.0. That was in the second video. So here's what we got so far. And also we changed the... Uh, how did we do it? So we went to, I think this is going to be at the 120 BPM. Yeah, it's going to be at the 120 BPM. So what we did, let's go back and let's change our BPM back to our tempo because we haven't saved the actual session yet. We're going to have to put it back on this BPM that we were using. And I think I said that my favorite BPM is like a 87 or 88. So let's go with that. And let's see how that sounds. So, yeah, so to in this video today, what we're going to do, we're just going to drop a sample on here. We're going to find us a series of samples and we're going to drop them on here and we're going to create a song. And the reason I'm doing this, I got a guy with a shout out to Trey Deuce. He hit me up and he said, man, every time I sit down in front of a machine, I have an idea, but I just can't bring it to fruition because by the time I find a drum kit and find all the sounds I want, I lose the idea. So the reason I'm doing this whole video series is to help guys help Trey and other guys like Trey who really want to sit down and start creating. Because once you start being able to create with a little more finesse and speed, then you'll start learning how to manipulate the samples and the tracks and creating your own music. So what we're going to do now, man, we're going to go into our loop right up here. And we're just going to find us something that got a loop series to it. And what we're going to do... We gonna, let's go into this one. And we're just going to find us something, man, that we can drop right on this sample and just let it fly. So as we can see right here, matter of fact, we'll take this first set. We'll take everything from this first set. We won't even look hard. We're just going to take everything from this first set. So what this first set is telling me that this is this the first set. It's at tempo 140. It's in the key of G. And this is this is the actual instrument bass, chord, plucks, one, two, crashes, and the whole nine. So we're just going to use these samples right here. And I know you're thinking up front like, oh, okay, gold mine. But your tempo is 88. How are you going to put that sample, drop that sample on that beat and make it work at that tempo without having any issue? And here's how we're going to do it. So let's listen to our beat one more time. And that's what we sounding like. So what we going to do, we going to jump all the way out the window. And let's start listening to the samples in this setup here. We're going to go to browse. I'm, I'm actually using the complete control right now so i'll take the 
cursor and kind of put it over here somewhere so you kind of see me. But here we go. We're just going to go through them. this don't really sound like nothing to you you know what i'm saying but trust me we finna drop this baby in here and it's gonna be the it's the simplest process man and this is what make machines so easy to use and that's why you see so many people online using machine machine is actually built and i'm not being paid for this by native instruments it is built to help you create as fast as possible. I know we're in the era of the five-minute beat, but it's not for a five-minute beat. It's just to help the producer create as fast as possible without losing the idea. So here you go, man. So I'm just going to click OK to that. And now we got our sample in there. And it's set at one bar, it's set at a one bar loop. So if you wanted to hear this at a one bar loop over your beat, you could actually. And, and that's another good thing about machines. So check it out. And it'll just keep looping over and over and over from that. But what we're going to do, I'm going to actually go down, hit pattern, and I'm going to set the pattern to the actual length of the sound. Set this. I'm going to show you something else also. So the reason why I'm able to just drop this sample in here at 140 BPM and my track is at 88 BPM is because they got this little thing in machine. It's like a it's like a sampler in a sense. And what it does, it takes the sample and manipulate the sample to rock with any tempo that you may have. So I'm going to show you an example really quick so watch this so i'm gonna start it up and as i change the tempo you're going everything is going to stay on point and it don't matter what speed i go to And I'm going to take it and slow it down. Look, I can take it and slow it down. And the sample stays on point the whole time. So let's go back to our speed. And the reason for that is right here. This little thing that you see that says audio, when you go in here, you can put it on sampler. And as you can see, it actually goes away. And then you can, if you're in sampling, you would have to do it like this. Let's get our pencil so that we can see what we're doing. And drop that in there so that it would trigger the sample. But if you triggered that sample at 140 beats per minute, with my tempo set at 88, chances are it's not going to work. So let's look at it. Let's, let's take a listen. So do you see what's happening? My beat is playing at my beat is playing at 88 
beats per minute. The sample is playing at its recommended 140 beats per minute, the, the tempo that it was created at. When you go into the sampler and you leave it on sampler, this is how you can go in and chop samples. We'll get to that in a later video. That's a whole nother video because everybody do chops and stuff different. So what you want to do, I'm going to write that back out of there. And we're going to go back up to sampler. We're going to go down to internal and we're going to go to audio. Oops, I'm on the wrong one. I need to go right here. And where is my audio? Uh-oh. I just lost my RTO. I think I'm on the wrong thing. I'm on the wrong thing. Did I do that wrong? Did I just do something wrong? Okay, so I'm going to reset this. I, I got myself lost here. I'm going to go back to pluck. Boom. Drop it back in there. There we go. And now with it being on audio, it's going to... I got myself tripped up there for a second. With it being on audio, it's telling you the length is 32. The uh, sample speed is 140. It's on stretch. And that's basically what it does. It takes that and it stretches that sample so that it plays at any tempo that you got your uh, project set to. So let's listen to it again and make sure we still got it on point. Yeah, there we go. So basically when you drop your sample in and you already made your beat, you want to drop it in and put it on audio. If you notice, mine did it automatically and yours probably would too. So then if you wanted to add something else to this, go back. Then we're going to add this. And then let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, so right there, we got a little something that we want. We got the sample started. We got the whole thing started. I'm going to go up here and hit this little plus, and I don't want to put anything else on that group yet. So what we'll do, go back to browse. And then, and then we'll put these pads on their own group so that we can manipulate them differently. Uh, and then I'll take, go back to browse, grab another pad, and then we can listen to it. So now we're starting to sound like we got something going here. So I'm going to go to another group. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to one that I passed up in the beginning. And we're going to drop that one on there. And we're going to change it to the right length. And now we really starting to have a full track. And this is all just grabbing samples out of your sample library just to get you started. So here we go with the uh, 
bass and everything set up. Check us out. So that's how you do that, man. So uh, basically, what we ended up doing, and I'm, let's go here and let's we'll go we'll mute each one and we'll go back and kind of do an overview really quick. So we started out with our test kit that we made, and then we made a pattern with the test kit that sounds like this. Then we came and we add, we said, you know what, let's add something. And we added this. So let's mute the test kit and have these playing and watch this. plucks then we went here and we added some pads and those are pads and then we go here and we dropped us a bass in there. And these are all samples directly from my sample library. These are loops from my sample library. I haven't manipulated anything. This is simply to show you how easy it is to set up a track from scratch when you kind of new to machine so that you can get in the flow and here's everything together so some of these we don't want to play at the same time uh, yeah so and this is what we have so far Man, so if you like this video, hit that subscribe button, hit that like icon under that video. And like always, man, thanks for watching and be on the lookout for part four where we go a little more in depth and we start to take some of these samples and the drum kit and start to manipulate them a little more and turning them into what we really want them to be so that they can really sound like a song and we can kind of structure it with a chorus and everything like that. So stay tuned for part four. And like always, man, peace.